Hi everyone and welcome to a very, very special edition, or it is for me anyway, of In The Fox's Den. I've never made any secret of the fact that I'm a massive fan of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And as you can see on my left here, there is a brand new book out, which uh, is called My Eyes Have Seen The Glory. It's the painstaking work of Toby Benjamin and Alan Fisher. And uh, it is full of 40 interviews with legends of the lane. And I'm very glad to say that we have one of those with us now. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit about himself and about the book. Ladies and gentlemen, Mickey Hazard. Hi, Mickey. So how are you, mate? I'm very good. I'm very good. So well enough to to go back on the golf course when they open up on Monday then? Yeah, well, well I had a push, I had a push. <laughs> no, I'll be there, I'll be there Monday. Um, we're here to talk about this, uh, this great book that's, um, that's uh, here on, uh, on my left-hand side. And um, that's by Toby Benjamin and Alan Fisher. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's, because um, obviously your interview's in there, so I'm not gonna spoil it for all the readers. So I'm gonna let them read your interview, but just uh, give us a, a, a brief idea of your background. You, you were born in Sunderland, because uh, you, you're, you're never hidden that accent. So you were born in Sunderland, but you, um, you, you came to Spurs at what, the age of 14? Um, well, I was signed at Spurs. Well, not signed because you weren't in those days. You know, you know, in my younger days, you weren't allowed to, to travel within an hour of your uh, place of birth or where you live um, to train with a football club. So, of course, that gave local clubs a much more chance of getting you signed up. So, um, but Spurs had watched me from the age of eleven. The Tottenham scout came to every single game that I went to, um, that I played in, sorry. And he he was there befriending my dad, talking to my dad, doing all the things that a scout should do if he wants to sign a, a youngster. Um, got friendly, spent two years coming to watch me, two and a half years. Um, every single game, no matter where I played, whether it was my school, my town or my county, um, he was there. Um, he would invite us round to his house for dinner and, and, and he would often turn up on our doorstep uh, uninvited <laughs> uh, just to, to show his face and, and, and keep in. So he put an incredible amount of effort in yeah. to showing that he wanted me, whereas the, the local clubs as such, the Sunderland's, Newcastle, Middlesbrough's, um, of course they showed interest in me and wanted to sign me but never showed any effort whatsoever. Mainly, I, I put it down to the fact that um, they thought that I wouldn't leave Sunderland. They thought, I, well, I couldn't leave Sunderland until I was 14, so they thought that I wouldn't give up on um, training at the local football club, Sunderland, um, for three years waiting to join Spurs. But my dad was sort of a little bit cleverer than that. And, um, of course, the rest is history. I... Uh, I joined Spurs at the age of 14 on schoolboy forms, travelled down every school holidays, and um, obviously the rest is sort of been written about. Well, as a, as a season ticket holder since uh, 19, the 1970s, and I saw my first game in 1968, I'm very pleased that you did, Mickey, because you uh, oh gave me a lot of pleasure, mate. And, um, and it's still nice seeing you now in the lounge after the game. Um, yeah, no, it is something that I've sorely missed during COVID. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to uh, to seeing you you back there. So, um, so you got interviewed by Toby for uh, for this uh, this book, and um, one of the things that has really become obvious, I think, to all Spurs fans, is how much Spurs is your team and how much you love them and. Um, you know, almost every day I read something on social media about the, the fact that you're fully engaged with what's happening now under Mourinho. So the love is still there, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, it's from the position that I've found myself in throughout the vast majority of my life. 
um, it's it's so easy to love Tottenham Hotspur Football Club because I all the things that everybody dreams of doing for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club I've I've done. You know, I've walked out the tunnel to glory, glory. Um, I I've sort of um, scored goals on White Hart Lane. I've listened to the fans sing my name. Uh, I've scored winning goals in semi-finals of the cups on White Hart Lane. I I I won trophies on White Hart Lane and at Wembley. So all the things that every youngster who's a Spurs fan or whatever fan, that all they dream of all their lives is to win trophies um, and, and play for their football club. Um, and even though they support them, um, they sort of um, dream bigger. You know, as a fan, as a, as a sort of 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 year old, we dream big. We don't dream about being a fan of a football club. We dream about playing for a football club, about scoring goals for the football club, about lifting trophies for the football club. Um, and, and, and in turn, that will make you an even bigger, bigger fan. Um, and of course, as I was saying, from the place that I sit now, right this moment, it's absolutely so easy for me to say that I love Tottenham Hotspur Football Club because every dream that I ever had was fulfilled at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Now, from a fan's perspective, you sit there and you say, right, what does a fan, why does a fan give this unconditional love to a football? Well, a fan gives this unconditional love uh, because they found themselves, as I did, somewhere, somehow, sometime in a place where it felt like home. It just felt like home. Uh, uh, and of course, they then... Uh, swore their allegiance to Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Uh, and, have and as a consequence of that, they've spent fortunes and fortunes over the years. They've had highs and lows, more lows, because there's always more lows at ever, whatever football club you get. <laughs> that, you've had, we, we have highs and lows that are just... Um, and, and yet they are so loyal and, and, and their love is unconditional. And yet not one of them, not one of the fans has experienced what I've experienced. So when people say, Mickey, you're an unbelievable fan of Tottenham. I am, I am, I am. Right? And I'd put myself on a par with anybody. The love that they have, I would be there with them. But I do it from a place of um, education, a place of, you know, I've, I've, I've experienced all the great things that happen within that football club and fans haven't. And my only wish, my only wish is because the fans are so unconditionally in love with Tottenham Hotspur or whoever, um, and they love them like it's their own child. My wish is that I wish everybody out there who supports Tottenham Hotspur Football Club could experience the things that I experienced, like walking out to the tunnel to the singing of glory, glory, or scoring a goal and running to the shelf and celebrating with the shelf. You know, having the fans singing one minute, yeah, I wish every fan could uh, could experience that because then they would just it would make it all worthwhile for them. Well, as look, it I'll, has for I'll tell you one thing that a lot of fans have experienced, and those of us like myself that uh, are lucky enough to see you play on April the on April the twelfth when the barbers are opening up again, um, and uh, a lot of the other shops as well but april the 12th uh, 1982 um was actually the day so i'm going to shock you now it'd be 39 years on april the 12th since you scored at highbury and we won 3-1 and i believe and i remember that day as if it was yesterday and you scored and garth crooks got a couple i actually scored a worldie an yeah. absolute worldie, and I've never ever seen it. Fantastic. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know if it was a worldie. It felt like a worldie. It was written about like it was a worldie. I beat three men from the off wheel line and 25 yards out, smashed it into the top corner. It felt like a worldie, and I've tried over time to see it. And um, unfortunately for me, the in those days you weren't allowed advertisements on the shirt, and they were JVC, I think. Um, and of course, they wore that on their shirts, so the goal never got shown on TV. 
sadly. Well, I'm, I'm, we're going to put uh, a playlist. All the interviews that I do, we put we put playlists underneath. Can I just move? Because this sun is, it's hard to believe, but the sun is absolutely no, smashing no, no in my eyes. Believe, no one would believe we were in England, would they? Uh, I know. It's, <laughs> honest to God, it's absolutely banging into my eyes. And I'm, oh, that's so much better in here now. Let me just sit down, get a place to place this. The fans are getting a nice look at your house. Uh, they won't. It's not my house, actually. <laughs> One sec. Uh, are you, uh, are you sitting so comfortably, Mickey? That sun was absolutely blinding me. I could, I, could, I could see it beaming in your face. Do you know what? All day long, there's not been one bit of sun in the garden. Not one bit, right? Been raining, everything. Yeah, no, the, second I, the second I sat down, the sun was glaring into my eyes. I could hardly see you. All right, you can, you can blame me for not being in the garden then. Um, but... Um, but look, we, we but that uh, that day uh, at Arsenal. I mean, we we didn't often win at Arsenal, even even in those days. But that's why I remember it so well. And you did score a great goal, and you and Garth Crooks meant uh, that meant that uh, that that we won three one. And that was also the year that we won the FA Cup. For, for it was the year we should have won everything. If, yeah, if the honest truth. That was the year that. Um, we only ended up winning the FA Cup, but we were 1-0 up with a minute to go at, at Wembley in, against Liverpool in the Milk Cup final. Yeah. Uh, and lost it, threw it away with Archibald clean threw around the keeper. We lost that game. We then um, should have won the league, but the backlog of fixtures caught up with us. We played 60, 60 games that season. 60, 65 games that season we yeah. played. Uh, and we only had sort of, it wasn't like today where you get a rest every two games. You, you, you were in the team when you played. Um, I, I mean, Steve Perriman played all 65 games that year. Um, and then, of course, um, Barcelona in the semi final of the Cup Winners' Cup yeah. um, kicked us off the park. We absolutely played them off the park and got kicked off the park and ended up going out on, in that game. So, a very rare just, mistake from Ray Clements, if I remember. Exactly. It was a season whereby. I genuinely believe from the bottom of my heart that if we'd hung on against Liverpool um, and won the first one, we would have won all four because it would have took the pressure off. But with each defeat came more and more pressure. Suddenly we felt it, it almost grew that we weren't going to win a trophy. Um, and by the stage that we played QPR, we were all absolutely shattered. 60-odd um, games. And, and um, so it was lovely to win the, the, the FA Cup, but I, I genuinely believe we were... Unbelievable team, and, and Ozzy says it's the best team he ever played for. Best, you know. So um, I really think that we were very, very unfortunate that year to because we had such had a backlog. The, the Falklands around that time as well, didn't we? The Falklands came. There was so many things, and, and obviously we lost Ozzy. Uh, so many things um, impeded us that year. Um, I, I, I honestly, I look back on that year and I think. That must have been one of the best Spurs teams ever. And, and it must have been a team so close to winning absolutely everything that in the end only won one thing. It was a tragedy. Well, listen, a, a, lot, of, a lot of you who have seen the glory days and the glory nights are in this book, which uh, unbelievably is 511 pages. Um, it's a big book. And, uh, and there are some great... Uh, interviews in there with yourself and a, and a lot of your teammates and I should say at this point as well that a pound from every retail sale of the book is going to the Tottenham Tribute Trust um, for a lot of our legends who, who, who you know for one reason or another need some help and there's also um, as you can see from, from the front cover here um, images uh, and great artwork by the, by the great Paul Trevelyan, who's 87 years young and uh, and um, still I think he could still beat me in a race. To be honest, he's got so much energy. But have you have, have you ever met Paul Trevelyan? He's a massive Spurs. I I probably have, but 
I've met so many people, so many wonderful people over there. But I'd just like to say um, the the donation to the Tottenham Tribute Trust is quite amazing. Um, I've got to say that I've not had any sort of, um, not that I can remember, um, help off them as yet. Because um, thankfully, um, there's far more worthy causes than me, and, I, and I've never really needed the help. Although I have spoken to them on two or three occasions last year, for instance, I had four operations, um, and at one point, things were getting so bad because of lockdown that I couldn't. Um, I was getting so ill because I couldn't have the operation, um, the, the final operation to get rid of the problem. Um, so I was suffering very badly. The, the tribute trust contacted me. Um, and along with the PFE, they were sort of trying to combine to get me seen, um, separate of, um, to, to, to fund an operation because the NHS obviously wouldn't, wouldn't let me, wouldn't operate on me. Um, so that was great, but the Tribute Trust is, is such an incredible cause um, for, and that's not saying that there's not more worthy causes, of course there is, um, but what you have to sometimes remember about former footballers you know in the the money rich world of today's football you know you look back to someone like cliff jones for instance uh who won the double in 60 61 five pound a week um you know uh, so players of yesteryear maybe don't didn't get the rewards that they saw work towards each each year has worked towards getting better rewards for players. So therefore, when when the and your body takes a rude battering when you played football all your life, um, professionally especially, I, I know because I suffer uh, with my ankles and knees. Uh, so these players who are just normal everyday folk, they obviously haven't got the funds to sort of go um, and get a an operation on whatever it is that they need. And, and that's where the Tribute Trust come in. So any donation that goes to the Tribute Trust, it, it, it goes to helping. I, I know Eddie Clayton, for instance, Eddie Clayton didn't get help off the Tribute Trust, um, but I, 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 he wasn't aware of it. Um, and it ended up having to remortgage his house to get a, um, well, I, I think I think he remortgaged his house to, to raise the money to pay for an operation. And um, so you see the benefits um, that the Tribute Trust does for former players yeah. who've come across not just injury or, or ill health, but hard times as well. Um, so it's an incredible cause and, and very honourable that you did such a thing. Yeah, no, we've been we've been working with them and it is a, a great organisation. And you mentioned Cliff Jones as well. And you said like £5 a week. So it's incredible, really, because Cliff to still look so fit he's in he's in the book I think he I think he won't mind me saying he's the oldest person that's in the in the book and and obviously the the one remaining player from that 1961 double side um and um and he still turns up in the lounge every game he's his love for Tottenham matches yours Oh, Cliff is unbelievable I mean I, I haven't got the art to tell him that he was on two pound fifty a week more than me <laughs> and I was 20 years later, but no, he's an absolute legend. I, 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 if you've ever sat in the Oak Room when he's been introduced in the old way, or Leon when when he's been introduced, he's introduced as Cliff Jones, uh, won the double, won the first part of the first British team to win a European trophy, won a, um, another FA Cup, and then again in '67. Um, he also won the Grand National. He was president of America, and so because he, he's won so many trophies, they reel off a whole host of things. It's it's very funny, uh, but he's an absolute gentleman, um, an hero. Um, I, I I have to say that if there's, I I was at the start of lockdown about last April, just after I'd got out of hospital actually, um, with COVID. Um, there was lots of things doing the rounds on Twitter and Facebook and little challenges here, toilet, keep you up, toilet rolls, etc. Uh, and Cliffy posted a video of himself on Twitter at 84 years of age doing an exercise regime, sit-ups, squat thrusts, press-ups, the lot. And it was like, I couldn't do them when I was playing. And here he was at 84 years of age, down there doing press-ups. It was absolutely incredible. That must be in the Welsh blood, I think. 
He's, he's an amazing human being, Cliff. And um, <laughs> for anybody that comes across Cliff, uh, I have to say they would hold him in nothing but the very, very highest of esteem because he's such a, uh, an absolute gentleman. Yeah, no, he, he he is very much so, and everybody loves him in the in that lounge after the game, as they do with you. Now, I'm going to mention uh, that you um you you have a, a business now called uh, Echoes of Glory. Um, Echoes of Echoes of Glory Nights. Echoes of Glory Nights. Uh, only only I could choose that name, eh? <laughs> it's it's brilliant. It goes brilliantly with the book, and obviously we we want to work with uh, with you uh, in in terms of the book when we can get the live audiences back and get uh, some some Q and A's from some of the wonderful people that are in this book. But but tell us a little bit about the business itself, Mickey. Basically, it's a it's an events based business that um, puts on events. Um, for fans to meet former players sometimes it's hard to get the modern day player because they're, they're obviously contracted that they can't um, but we, we try to get as near as we can um, I've got one that was supposed to be June the 3rd of last year where we've got the full 81 team the full 81 team that's every single player um, and the manage, every bit of management and staff We've got the referee from the 81 Cup final. Um, we've got Dave from Chas and Dave attending Keith, the event. Keith Hackett, got, isn't it? Yeah, Keith Hackett. Keith yeah, Hackett, and Dave yeah. Peacock from Chas and Dave's coming along to sing oh. Aussie's Dream with the team on stage. Um, we've got, Rick, we're hoping, we haven't got it sorted yet, but we're hoping to um, um, hire some mannequins painted in Manchester City colours so that when we introduce Ricky Velia, he comes on uh, the, the dance floor and dribbles through the mannequins and puts it in the back of the net. So we're hoping to have a really special occasion. And, and But it, mainly it's to to give fans an opportunity to mix with their heroes, to um, sit with them, to sing with them, to dance with them, to talk to them, to photograph with them, to get signatures. Um, just wonderful opportunities that arise for fans that have um, idolised these people all your life. You know, some players, uh, you, you, when sometimes you do an event and you just cannot believe the hero worship uh, of the players. It's, it, it, it really is special. Um, but for me, extra special because I feel like I'm no longer a, I, 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 I'm no longer a former player. I always will be, but I no longer am. I'm a fan. Um, so when I'm putting on these nights, um, I'm putting them as much on for myself as the fans because I want to hear the stories, even though I was there when they happened on some of them. I just want to hear them again. I want to be part of it. I want to have my picture taken with them. I want to get their autographs. And, you know, and it's wonderful. It really is special. Uh, so, yeah. And obviously the Spursograms, we did the Spursograms, which is, again, uh, a different business altogether it's, it's it's trying to recreate a magical moment like you might say to me i want ozzy or Dealers to come to my house and have a cup of tea and a sandwich <coughs> so we would bring ozzy or Dealers to your house you get signed shirt you sit there and have a cup of tea and a drink with them i mean what we've done so far it's been mind-blowing people are taking it away we do it on zoom we do it on video messages and you get a signed shirt with everything and and it's wonderful for me seeing you know, I don't have to go along because you've, you've, you've hired all your dealers, but I go along because I want to see your reaction. You know, when you get excited that you're seeing, what's your dealers coming to my house? Wow. It's amazing for me. So, yes, it, 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 it's about um, allowing fans to experience their heroes um, up close and personal. Well, listen, there's, there's plenty of heroes in this book and you're one of those. And I think that what comes over, not just on social media, but in this broadcast, is your passion for Spurs. And this broadcast and this book is being pushed out worldwide to, to fans all over the world. It's being co-published by ourselves at Age of Fox Media and uh, with Mooney and Lambert, who are based in Idaho. And uh, Troy Lambert, who owns Mooney and Lambert, has become a Spurs fan uh, now to oh. the point where every time 
uh, I, I, I see him on, on Zoom. Uh, he's got his Spurs hat on and he's joined the Spurs Supporters Club in Boise, Idaho, where he lives. Wow. And that's got 75 members. So, so you know, this really is going all over the world. Well, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, there's fans throughout the world. It's, uh, it's quite incredible the amount of um, messages that I get. Can I take my events to America, Australia, New Zealand? Can we take them everywhere? It's, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable, but it's not in reality. Um, you know, this football club has been going since 1882 and it's built up such a following. It's, it's incredible, but it's much more than that. It's a family. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I'm 61 and I've spent 50 years in some capacity at Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. Um, so it's the most, in actual fact, the older I get, the more in love I get with Tottenham. Um, and while that's not saying I don't get frustrated as when we lost the, the other night, 3-0, um, in what I felt should have been a canter that, and, and, and the way we performed against Arsenal, of course, heartbroken. I couldn't even talk the next game um, when we played Aston Villa. I couldn't even write because I was so upset about them two games because I really felt we were going places. Uh, so uh, in, in with all the love, there's heartbreak as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but the, 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 one of the best ways of describing um, what being a, a fan of Spurs is that you, when you walk down the tunnel, whether it be the tunnel at White Hartley or whether it be the new tunnel, and you walk and you enter that stadium, the new stadium or White Hartley the lump in your throat, the shivers that run through your body, the goosebumps that are everywhere, um, and, and now I'm 61. Every time I do it now, it's even better. I, I get I get so emotional because how many more times am I going to do it? So each time that I do it nowadays, it's like I treat it like it's the last time I'll ever do it. You know, I haven't did it for a year. If somebody had told me that I wouldn't walk down the Spurs Tunnel for a year, I, I would have said, you must be joking. But here I am a year later, I haven't did it. So... Um, it's it's an amazing uh, and this football club is just it's just magical and, and 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 I don't get involved in the politics of it because I support this football club and, and it's it's irrelevant of who's manager what players there is who's the chairman it's irrelevant of that because they will come and go but the football club will be there forevermore. Um, and I support the football club so I don't get involved in any politics because I know that. Um, the football clubs, what I support. Mickey, I, I don't think I could follow that with anything. I think you've summed up the spirit of this book, which is, which is for the fans. And I don't know of any player that that's that's more of a fan than you. And I know that there are a lot of, of legends out there who are still fans. There's one on the phone to you now, but um, the but, former, it's a former newspaper reporter. Is he Harry Harris? He's probably oh I know Harry yeah he's probably he's probably heard about this this interview he wants to get in on yeah it. yeah, yeah. He's he's getting in on the he, this has been absolutely brilliant you've got absolutely no idea how much this means to I know how much this means to all the Spurs fans that are watching this you also have no idea how difficult it was for me to find a shirt with a Spurs badge on that still fitted me so I've managed to squeeze into this one. For, for for this uh, for this interview, but you've been absolutely brilliant, and you've really you've really captured the emotions that there are around those glory days and glory. Days. Easy easy to do, and just a message to all the fans: my eyes have seen the glory, guys. Go out, get it. Um, I will be um, read it because let me tell you, this football club is so graced with glory. Because glory doesn't actually mean you have to win thousands of trophies. There's so much more to glory than just picking up a trophy. Although, yeah, I love picking up a trophy as well. To dare is to do. Thank you, Mickey. Yeah. Take care. See you soon. See you, everyone. Wow. Well, I don't think any Spurs fan is in any 
doubt there of how much Mickey Hazard loves uh, Tottenham and uh, and what it means to him to have been a player uh, and also now a, a, a fan and passing that on to generations of the Hazard family as well. And uh, and I'm sure that's wonderful for you all to hear. This uh, this book, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory, is an incredible 511 pages. It is the latest um, in the uh, collection of Mooney and Lambert and Agent Fox Media. And, uh, as, and as I said earlier, it's, it's got a bit of a special place in, in my heart. So uh, we'll put the links as to where you can buy this book. There is a limited edition available as well. There's going to be only 200 of those and they come with uh, with a Paul Trevelyan poster so um, don't miss out on uh, on the limited edition because once they're gone they're gone but this is a fabulous book um, the uh, the book itself has got the pictures of color sport uh, as well as uh, as the wonderful artwork of, of Paul Trevelyan and, uh, and all those wonderful interviews. It really is a must for any worldwide Spurs fan. And it really captures the glory days and, and glory nights that, that we've had and hopefully we'll still have in the future. So thank you very much for watching this. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel um, and please go and buy this book, whether you buy it from the publisher or from Amazon, um, or from anywhere else once the bookshops are open again you should be able to get it there too um, but it is a must for any Spurs fan and uh, and I can't wait for it to come out uh, it's it's going to come out I've got to tell you this it's coming out on the 6th of May that's the actual release date um, and that's special because that's actually 60 years to the day that Spurs won the double, and one of those doubles, uh, one of those double winners, Cliff Jones, is uh, is in the book, as um, as we stated in the interview. So thank you again, thank you to Mickey, um, and uh, please enjoy this book. Um, I know that uh, that everyone watching this is a big Spurs fan, so it's a must. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.